Okay. Well, well, brothers and sisters, we are really blessed today to be able to have Brother Trent Allen to be able to be our guest um, presenter today. Brother Allen is our online seminary principal in the North America Southwest area for the Arizona Online, online Seminary. Uh, Brother Allen has the heart of a rescuer, and I love working with him. He's going to be presenting some ideas that we have been working through and, and trying in the Arizona area that could be compatible in every single seminary and institute class in the church. Um, we sincerely and deeply desire to gather every youth and young adult in the world to be able to have experiences in seminary and institute, but especially to be able to have experiences in the scriptures and with their connection to the Savior. And so, Brother Allen, we'd like to turn the time over to you. Um, you're more than welcome to, to ask or do anything with this group. This, these are some of the finest teachers in the church. So you're going to have a lot of fun with them. Well, I am super excited to be with you. Um, let's just briefly just introduce um, you so you understand where my heart's coming from. My wife and I are um, born and raised in Arizona. We have eight beautiful children, four boys and four girls. We have one little grandbaby that runs around our house when they get to come over, and I love being a dad. Um, I'll just let you know about our kids. Some have been very easy to gather to Christ. Others, not so Are easy. you there? Yeah, not so easy. Hello? And um, so I'm going to start with a picture that might help you. This right here means a lot to me. I love that Christ is the perfect gatherer. Will you do me a favor and just look at the details of the picture. What do you notice about the details of this picture? Anybody? He's got a shepherd's crook in his hand. He does. What else do you notice? Um, I love that he's carrying the sheep instead of just herding it like you normally see. Sister Irish, do you mind expanding on that a little bit? What do you, what do you mean by that? Um, because I think it goes back to, um, I don't know, to me, it kind of goes back to he can carry our burdens and he carries us and helps us and delivers us. And so to me, that's why I like that. Because right now in my life, that's really important in my life right now. So thank you for your testimony. We do me a favor, Sister Irish. Should we go mm -hmm. a little bit deeper? Where is he carrying the sheep from? Look in the background. What do you notice about the background, everyone? From darkness? Yeah. The storms, the darkness. You can see maybe where this sheep was lost or found. And um, I just want you to know that I love him because he has put me on his shoulders and carried me back from very dark places. And so as we talk today, we're going to talk about some strategies and techniques, but at the core, I want you just to feel it's all about him, and he's the perfect shepherd, and we can gather these youth to him. But the key we're going to talk about today is we aren't the perfect gatherers. It's not us that's the key. It's the students who sit with us, or maybe the students who haven't yet realize they're being carried by Christ. Those are the perfect gather, gather, gatherers. So let me just tell you a little bit about what we're experimenting and trying. I have, um, in Arizona, we have 250-ish um, online seminary students who come and join our program. We have a few teachers who serve them, and we love our students. A lot of our day, a, a lot of our classes, we do four uh, Canvas classes a week, and then we do one face-to-face. -face. Most of those are through Zoom. But as Brother Goldhart has asked me and said, Trent, we have to gather them. There's thousands in Arizona that should be in seminary and should be an institute and are not. And we need to find a way to get them in the building so they can feel of Christ's love, to get them in, in our online classes so they can feel of Christ's love. And I said, then we need to try things different. You need to be willing to let us try a lot of things different. Thankfully, our leadership in the Southwest has been really good at letting us try things. So... We tried an experiment last year, and Brother Michael, can I tell them a little bit about that background? Is that okay? Okay, perfect. So my class became the first hybrid class, which means half of them were coming through a Zoom call, 
and half of them were walking across the street from the seminary. So we had about 15. School ended a little early on Wednesday. So at 1.30, they would walk across the street, and then a bunch would just Zoom in. And again, they could go to a later Zoom class if it worked better, or we do an early morning one, they can go to that. But we wanted to experiment with this hybrid after school class to see my, what might happen with the gathering. And so we started in the first semester, it was about 15 students who gathered in Zoom and about 15 students who walked across the street. And the core group was just our online students. As we got that moving and it was working, we went to our other students and the online students and said, hey, come join us. For instance, I'll tell you, a young man, I'll change his name. His name was Steve. And, and it's Steve's like, but then I saw him at a game uh, on campus and he's like, I'm not going to seminary. I know I, I said, I know you should come join my class. He's like, no, I'm behind two credits. I need to do this. I need to do that. I can't take seminary. And I said, how about this? Join my online class. He's like, brother Alan, I hate COVID. I hate online. I'm not going to ever log in and do a lesson. I said, how about this? Just walk across the street once. Try it one time. Just come. We do a Zoom hybrid experience and feel the Savior's love. I promise you, you'll feel something. He goes, I'll try it once. And he came and he felt something. And he came every week the rest of the year. He never got credit for seminary. He didn't log in hardly ever. But he came. We had four or five students that we gathered one by one like that. I would just find them and say, hey, I would talk to Bishop or a parent. And sometimes I would just grab them and say, hey, I noticed you're not in seminary. Come join us. Go down. I hate, I hate Zoom or I hate Canvas. I don't like this. COVID ruined me. I, how about you just come and sit with us and feel the Savior's love? So little by little, we started to get some momentum. From those students and a few here at this seminary, we just went and said, Will you start inviting your friends? You're the perfect gatherers. Like you are the key gatherers in this area. Um, let me just tell you about one other young man. Um, I'll call him Bobby. And Bobby is not his real name, but Bobby is an amazing young man. He was in a class, a regular release time class. And he came to me and said, hey, Brother Allen, are you still doing that Wednesday after school class with your online students? I said, yes, come, come join us. We'd love to have you. And he said, I have a friend on campus that's going through a really hard time and they need to feel the Savior's love. And I said, well, invite him, come and sit next, have him sit next to you. And he goes, I love you, Brother Allen, but I don't know, I don't trust you. I don't trust this class enough. Like, I want to make sure this class is the right fit for her to feel of God's love. And I said, then come try it out. How about Wednesday? Come and just sit there. And if you feel it and you feel the Savior's love, then invite her the next week. And so he came and felt it. It was relevant. It was focused on Christ. And he felt of God's love. And so the next week he invited her. And the next week he invited two more. And within a month, I, the class had doubled in size. In fact, we hit the, the day we hit 75 students, I said, how many were invited by a friend to come? And a bunch of them raised their hand. And I said, how many, like who invited you? And they yelled out names. And the name I heard the most was this Bobby kid. And I said, how many were invited by Bobby? 29 students raised their hand. 29 students were invited by their peer to come and feel the Savior's love. We had students coming from around the East Valley, not this high school. They came, a, a, a two girls he works with, they talked at work about how a lot hard life is. He's like, you should come feel the Savior's love in this class. So she, they came, and then he would just literally just go, come and feel the Savior's love. You'll feel the Savior's love. Just come and feel it. Now, knowing the dynamics of this class, we have to realize that there's going to be non-members that walk in every single week, and there's going to be people who have not been to church in years that walk in. So I have to structure the face-to-face -face experience different than maybe a regular Zoom seminary class or an online, like a regular traditional seminary class, because if I have... Like we did the class this week and there was 120 kids that came. We've had 12 non-members that have joined and, and come this, this, this month. And when you have two or three non-members who come in who have never been in a church building before, you have to approach that with these four things in mind. And so here's, if you don't re remember anything, remember these four things. Number one, focus on Christ. This is the key to everything for me. If you focus on Christ and make it really focused, centered on Jesus Christ, 
so they feel it is love. It changes everything. Make it so obvious that they can't misunderstand that it's about Christ. And there's a lot of strategy and things we can do. We can talk about that in a few minutes. Number two, focus on the students. Focus uberly, like super focused on their needs and not our needs, which means we're going to have to put ourselves in their shoes and maybe ask different questions to find out what's going on in their life. We do a lot of case studies in my class, both my online class and my um, my face-to-face -face experience, and almost every case study comes from them. I'll tell you how we create those in a minute. I'll just tell you what happened in the last couple of weeks so you can see what that looks like. Number three, it has to be relevant and engaging to them. If it's relevant and engaging to them and Christ is the center of that, then they're gonna wanna bring their friends, which leads to the fourth, they are the gatherers. We aren't the gatherers, they are the gatherers. They're the ones that have friends who are not coming to class. They're the ones who have family members who are not coming to class. And so just another story. Uh, my son happens to be here at this school. He plays on the football team. And there is a young man on the football team, one of his dear friends, they're really close, who's been through a lot of heartache in his life. I'm not gonna open the door and tell you about it, but he understands pain and hell and heartache. And freshman year, he attended seminary. I had him one semester and he's now a senior and hasn't come back. And my son just said, hey, come join us. He was feeling his love. And he asked for four weeks straight, five weeks, six weeks. And then finally, a few weeks ago, that young man said, I'm coming. I'm going to come. Just, just, I need to fill it. We did a case study that day, and I had them write a testimony of Christ in the case study. I wish I could show you because of the videos and, and permissions. I can't. I wish I could show you what this young man wrote to the case study, to Johnny. It was real. It was relevant. Like it was pre really pure and raw. I don't even know if it was completely appropriate because of how raw it was from his background, but it was from his heart and it was about Christ. There is a gathering that's taking place and the gatherers are the students. And so how do we help them be excited about inviting their friends to this experience? How do we help them say, hey, bro, or sis in their own house, hey, come and sit next to me during the next Institute online class. Hey, mom, come and sit next to me. Hey, cousin, you know what? You're going through a hard time. Come sit next to me in our next online class so you can feel the Savior's love. There is a lot of beautiful strategy to that. Um, Michael, can I spend another five to 10 minutes and talk about some strategy? And then we open up to some Q&A. What, what would be the timeline that would work best for you? Yeah, that's fantastic. Okay. So this is a little strategic. And so if it doesn't apply to you, that's okay. Just, just like listen to the, what the spirit teaches you and just take in what works for you. I know some of you use already prepared curriculum. Some of you do some work preparing your curriculum. I'm just going to give you one idea. The other day I walked into class and you can do this in a zoom class. Cause I had my zoom students there. And I just said, all right, we're going to dive deep into Isaiah. And I know we need to use a case study. And I have a couple ideas in mind, but instead of using my ideas, you guys are going to create the case study. So all I did is I walked in and I grabbed the marker and I put on the board, Sally. And I said, Sally is a 17 year old student who goes to this school. You guys tell me about her. And so one by one, I would just put a little line. They would say, she's an honor student. Her parents just got separated. And I would just write it. She's on the volleyball team. She has a lot of friends, but some friends pull her this way and some friends pull her this way. So little by little, all of a sudden, the students online and in person are just giving me ideas to create this 17-year-old girl that's real and relevant to them. And now that that got created, I said, okay, let's test Isaiah. Does Isaiah's words really work? Like, do they work in a real-life situation? So we just opened up to Isaiah 5.20. And I think all of you have studied that recently, but I just... I said, what does this verse look like in Sally's life? What does 
What does Satan try to make good look evil and evil look good? How does Satan play that game? And, and it's funny because the first response you're going to get on a Zoom call or the first response you get in class is a generic answer. You just need to know that. And so when they give you a generic answer, you need to know what you're going to do. So one of my stars, a, a great young man, a good kid, great family, he goes, drugs. Drugs is how he's going to do it. And I said, nope, that's not good. Come here. So I pull them up in front of the camera and the class. So now, now you, 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 if you all have Zoom only, just imagine you pull one of your students up and say, all right, we're going to have a talk in front of the class. It's going to be real. So I pulled this kid up. I put my arm around him. I'm like, all right, everybody online, this is, and I introduced him. And then I let, and I said this. And so we talked and I said, okay, let's be honest. Sally's at this school. Will Satan use drugs to try to make her get caught up in this web right now? And he goes, yes. I said, what drugs? What would be the gateway drug? What would be the first thing she's tempted? And he's like, I don't know. I'm not in the drug world, Brother Alan. I said, okay. So let's just talk, really. Do you think heroin is his drug of choice? Do you think she's going to, do you think Satan's going to go to her and go, hey, Sally, try heroin? Hey, Sally, try heroin. And they're like, no, that's kind of like a big jump. I said, how many of you? I said, Max, I was like, when's the last time you were offered heroin? He's like, never. I said, how many of you, 100 kids, how many of you have been offered heroin? Nobody raised their hand. Have you ever, how many of you ever had heroin destroy somebody in your house? I raised my hand because I know what that hell feels like. That's been the reality. That's why we've had a couple overdoses and funerals in my home. But that's not where Satan starts. So I said, tell me, what's the, what is the one thing that he might mess with? If you want to say drugs is maybe one. And he said, how about vaping, Brother Alan? And I asked the class, is that a good gateway one? And they got like, yeah, that's, is that a live real thing right now at this school? And they're like, yeah. So we talked about that. What would it look like? How would Christ give them the answers when that comes? And then I said, all right, what's the next one? I open it up to the class and the sweet girl, I know her story. Seven foster homes before she was adopted. And she said, Brother Alan, the next step is probably weed. It's probably marijuana. I said, okay. Then how does the gospel of Christ help Sally make these hard choices when they get hit at her? So then we went to Isaiah 1, which we studied the week before. How does Isaiah 1, and, and we just had this really cool, remember we talked about last week with Isaiah 1. How would that help her? And then we went, hey, there's another Dr. Mastery coming up in a couple weeks. Isaiah 53, go there. Let's have a cool experience with these three verses. And we've looked at the words that not, that Jesus Christ, it's not he can help us or heal us. He will, he already has. So what does that look like for Sally? That helped us dive into three or four more verses. And all of a sudden now, Sally became this person that we're trying to help. I had a quote from Elder Bednar I had prepared. I got him in small groups. Those online had, a, it was on the screen. Those in purple person happened. I said, okay, you guys have seven minutes. You're preparing for a role play. I'm gonna be Sally in real life. And you're gonna try to help me with Isaiah's words. And if you give me a generic seminary answer, I'm gonna call you out as Sally in front of the whole class. So they prepared. And you should have seen these groups. I have five, five football players who are too tough for tough who don't get into, like, they don't share. They got together and studied Isaiah those seven minutes in the coolest way. They were talking about Christ in a way that was like alive. I wanted to record it and send it to their mom. You won't believe, look at these kids talking about Christ. After they had that study, I said, all right, let's do this. Does this, does, does Isaiah and Christ really work? And so then I pulled somebody up. I just called on one person and I said, come up here. I saw your group was really engaged. Are you ready? And, and she's like, I'm ready. I said, you can pick anybody else in the class, somebody online or in person, who's going to be your partner. And we're going to be driving home from the football game. And I'm going to pull over into a park and I'm going to be Sally and I'm going to drop a bomb. So we're driving, we pull over and I just said, hey, you guys have been my best friends for years. We haven't done much the last few months because you've seen me slip away. My parents have got separated. I started going to those parties. And there's a boy there that gives me a lot of attention. And 
He introduced me to this and this and this. I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. And I just put my head down. And you should have seen these girls testify of Christ. They taught what we've been studying about Christ right from Isaiah. And I said, okay, girl, that was, that was powerful, but but do you believe what you just said? You sound like Brother Goldhart. You sound like Brother Allen. You sound like my parents. Do you believe what, what you just said? And she goes, yes, I know it. I said, how did you come to know that about Christ? That though your sins be as scarlet, they may be white as snow. That he is the healer. And she said, I've come to know him. And she told the class this beautiful testimony. When... Christ is the focus, and we focus on our students and the relevant things in their life, and then we create learning experiences that are engaging and relevant to them, they get real excited to bring their friends because they know it's going to be about Christ and it's going to be relevant. So, Michael, I think I can share my screen. Is that correct? So this is what next week looks like. I was just preparing for my next week. I'll just show you. Uh, I know yours looks so different, um, but here is here's what next week looks like for me. I have an intro video every week, just smile and saying, hi, it's me. My students say, Brother Allen, I want more video from you. I want more energy because the videos work. And then we have the introduction, update my reading, and then we do a choice board in our program. They usually have seven, six to seven, eight choices, and they get to do, they do four, one a day. We usually do one required. It's usually the, the doctoral mastery for the week. So here is the required learning activity. There's just a small little video for me, and we introduce Sally. There was introduction, and then the next talk, there's part two right here. And then they dive right in and have an experience with Isaiah 53 and Alma 7 and Elder Bednar's quote. And then they have a couple of um, discussion questions that they put in the discussion board that we can have an interaction with. with. They have different op learning options. Here's Sally part two. Later in the week, if they're like, you know what, I really had a good experience with Sally part one. I wanna dive deeper with that. And so here is a video that will get their heart going. And then three places in Isaiah, hope in Christ in Isaiah 51 and 52. Jesus wants me to return to him, his mercy, is beautiful in Isaiah 54 and 57, and Isaiah 58, 55, eight through nine, I can trust in him. His way is higher than my way and I can trust him. And so what happens now is what we're doing in our face-to-face our -face experience is now bleeding over to our, our Canvas experience. And many times I actually start in Canvas and then it goes into our face-to-face -face experience. And sometimes I just say, hey guys, for today's learning activity, I want you guys to help me answer these three questions about yourself so we can get to know each other. And I want you to help me create the next case study. In the discussion below, will you just write down a little mini case study? Somebody in real life that you know, somebody's going through something difficult, make it real and relevant. And I'll take five or six of those comments and create our next case study. Maybe, maybe in two weeks from now, it's gonna be um, Chuck. And here's Chuck's situation. And I don't create it. They actually, they create it. And so now it's coming from them. When I taught Institute for years, this is exactly what I did with my Institute students. It's not a seminary thing. With my Institute students, I said, hey guys, brothers and sisters, you, you're in the middle of this right now. We're going to do two case studies over the next month. I want you to create them, not me. And then we're going to test the scriptures. We're going to test the doctrine. Does the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ contain the answers? in real life. I just believe, and this is just me, that if I focus on Christ and I focus on my students and I make it relevant and engaging, then they become the gatherers to their friends and saying, hey, you should come and just jump on our Zoom call. Just, just jump on and see what happens. We are taking this to the next level. I won't get into a lot of this, but there's some cool stuff happen. Michael's encouraged me to try to find some other ways. So this is a stake that we've just outlined our enrollment in that stake. And then ward by ward, we've broken down and outlined specific individuals who are not coming. And now I know the peers who are in their wards and I can go to, I can go to Charlie and say, hey, Charlie, 
there's two kids in your war that are on the soccer team with you. Will you help me create a case study for two weeks from now that would help those two? And then will you invite them to jump in with us? Maybe they're not enrolled, but jump into Zoom and just say, hey, my teacher is doing this case study that's perfect for our friend group. I've never come to Institute or I've never come to seminary. That's okay, come and join me. Come to my house, sit next to me on the Zoom call and let's just experience this. I have students that will never ever log in because they just don't like Canvas and I'll say, hey, I did a case study from one of your comments you made in our face-to-face -face class. I think um, you need to make a comment about that. Your story is perfect. Your words will carry some weight in this class. And I have students that haven't engaged in months who will log in and make the most beautiful comment. Testifying of Christ, inviting somebody in that class to come into Christ. And then what I'll do is I'll screenshot that. And in our next face-to-face -face Zoom experience, I'll put it on the screen. Hey, here's two comments recently that were made in our case study from David and from Sean. Man, I can't believe how real these are. Will you just, everybody read right in the middle of the Zoom. What do you guys think of what Sean and David shared? And all of a sudden that lights our Zoom class on fire. Like all of a sudden now everybody's like, man, I didn't know that they felt that way about Christ. Man, I've never heard them testify of Christ. And now it's their words and their experiences that are lighting it on fire. Um, brothers and sisters, I, I'm pretty passionate about this, partly because my own children need to be gathered to your classes. I have three young adults, my own children, that could join one of your classes if you're teaching Institute this next semester. Two of them go to Institute and one of them doesn't. They all need Christ. And I don't know who's gonna invite them there. I don't know who's gonna get them there. Maybe it's somebody on their college football team is gonna say, hey, maybe it's a cute soccer player who goes, hey, you should come to Institute, it's online. Just come sit next to me, it's a date night. We'll just sit there and bake cookies and do our little institute class. I, I don't know what it's going to take, but it's my children who need to be gathered to Christ. Maybe that's why I'm so passionate. Maybe it's why it's so real to me. I'm not perfect at it, but Michael has given me the, he said, try, try things to gather these, try things way outside the box, try things that see what we can do. And it's given me authorization to go, okay, outside the box, I'm going to try things. And um, I believe all of us can do that. Every one of you have a heart of a gatherer, otherwise you wouldn't be here. I feel like I'm on sacred ground in this group. I wish I could give each of you a hug over this Zoom call. That's just the way I am in my family. I just wanna give you a hug and say, I love you. Thank you for loving the youth and the young adults you serve. But there's more who need the savior. And you and I aren't gonna be the ones gathering them. It's gonna be the students in our class. And so when we focus on Christ and the students and make it real and engaging, and then we invite them to bring their friends. Sometimes they say, hey, next week, we're gonna do part two of the case study we started today. Bring a friend, bring a friend who needs to feel of Christ's love. Guess what they do? They bring a friend. That class of 15 online and 15 in person is now Wednesday was 120 plus. That's a big class. It's hard to teach like that. That's not counting the ones who are here online. They want to bring their friends to Christ. Whether it's fully through Zoom or in person or invite them to join the Canvas experience. I just believe that. And I testify of that in Jesus Christ's name. I know it. All right, Michael, are we going to do some Q&A maybe possibly? Yeah, let's do it. Anybody have any questions or thoughts or ideas or concerns? Um, this has been messy. The last year and a half, it hasn't been smooth. There's some weeks it bombs and there's other weeks we get some leverage and then we go back. So don't think it's perfect. Literally, it's like, it's always evolving. But the way it evolves, I just ask my students. Well, part of the value in uh, Brother Allen, 
I'm in the East Valley right now. Gilbert is where I'm standing right now. I live in Clean Creek, Santan Valley. Why is Clear that? the other side of town. Oh, really? Uh, my wife's a school teacher, and I thought, what are the chances? Maybe, but uh, for that invitation. But I taught seminary out in Queen Creek a couple of years ago. It's really nice out there. I love it. We, we live on the other side of Queen Creek. I, I love that area. That's where we it's nice. that's where we live. We're up by Anthem. Oh, cool. Well, fellow Arizonan, we love you. Thanks. Any other questions, concerns, thoughts? So do you just do case studies like every week? Is that what you do for like the meetings or? No, sometimes it's sometimes it's a real study. Sometimes it's a Christ study. If you do too much of the same thing, you lose effectiveness. It has to have variety. But sometimes I'll just bring, I'll let them study and saying two of you are going to jump up here. It has nothing to do with case study. Two of you are going to jump up here in a real life situation. And I'm just going to ask you, what did you find about Christ? And what does it look like in your life today? And I just watch and, and they know that it's going to happen. And but it has to be real and relevant and raw. But if it's too much the same, you lose effectiveness. I have students, though, in my Canvas class that ask me to do a weekly case study. That's how much they love it. But I don't usually do that. I do it, and then I'll take a small break, and we'll use some variety. Because case study isn't, if case study becomes the program, Christ is it. Like, Christ is everything. It's not case studies. It's not a real study. It's, it's, it's Christ. And so. Yes, we do a lot of them, but you can't, you don't want to overdo it because you want to make it about them in Christ. There's about 10 different ways you can do that type of experience without it being a case study. Good question. I think the, the key for me, Sister Rustin, is just what's relevant and engaging to the students. And sometimes I ask them, I'm like, hey, I have an idea. Can we try it for two days and see if it works? And they're like, brother, I'm not bombed. I'm like, okay, this is your, this is your class, not mine. So what, what, what could we adjust and change to make it more relevant? And they come up with the coolest ideas. Some of my very best ideas are from students who said, brother, that's not relevant. That's not real to what we're going through. Like we're going through hell right now. I don't mean to, I'm not, I'm sorry, that, that's not a vulgarity. That's like literally, we're going through pain and hell and frustration and doubt and discouragement. And you just made this really like feel good case study. That's not our reality. I'm like, okay, then, then let's, how do we get more real with it then? This is your class, not mine. And they're like, can we try this? And I'm like, that's pretty intense. Are you sure you guys want to test the scriptures that way? Because I know it works. I believe Christ will do it. And they're like, Actually, I think we need to do that with what's going on right now at this school. I'm like, okay, you help me with that then. Now they learn, they own the learning activity. It's not my learning activity, it's theirs. I just need to know where we're gonna go in the scriptures just in case we need some direction. Many times I'll go like, okay, there's this chapter. You guys just came up with this. Let's test it. Does Gen this happened last semester. Does Genesis 39 contain the answers to what you just threw at this class? In the next 15 minutes, they went in and, and so these small groups and they looked and guess what they found? The answer was right there, right in the come follow me, right in Genesis 39. I didn't have to say a word. I didn't have to direct. I didn't say, look at these six verses. I said, what is there? And then there's other times where it's really sacred where I'm like, you know what? This is a personal one. Will you guys look at these 12 verses, not in a group, just by yourself and listen to what God teaches you about you. What would Heavenly Mother and Heavenly Father come and put their arm around you and tell you about you from those 12 verses? And just let them go and find it. So it looks, Sister Russian, I hope that helps. It looks different depending on the needs of the students and the variety you have. That helps, thanks. So do you get the ideas from them ahead of time so that you can make sure you lead them to the correct um, chapters yeah sometimes i do to be honest with you it's a lot harder to teach this way like i really have to know come follow me and what's in the scriptures because sometimes it is just what i said is i put sally on the board and i'm like i just believe this is going to work 
because I know Christ and the scriptures work and I don't know what they're going to come with. Other times they actually type it beforehand. So I come into it and, and, and I'm prepared. I actually go sometimes to be honest with you, sister Chandler, I will go and study, come follow me in detail. And I'll find five things. I'm like, if they don't see these five things about Christ, then it's going to affect their future marriage in five years from now. So I find those five things and then I create my case study or my learning experience around those five things. And that would be each week for each, each day, you do one thing. Oh, each, each, so what I, the way I prep is I look at the week, the come follow week and I'm like, what are the cat cannot miss things about Christ? If we get through this week and we don't get to these five things about Christ in 10 years from now, the adversary is going to have an advantage. And then I structure a lot of what we do around those 10 things. To be honest with you, I look at the curriculum that Michael has and that the church has, and I'm like, they don't address these 10, they, these five things. And sometimes they do. Sometimes I'm like, oh, that's awesome. But I need to change these two questions to make it more relevant to my classes. So I, I love to adopt and adapt. I love that. But sometimes I go, no, this, this has to be real for them. Three ideas that I just showed you in my canvas for next week came from the come follow me um, curriculum that the church has on the website. Okay. I just customized, I picked the exact things and then I added a question or two that would really lot on fire Sally's situation. Good question, Sister Chandler. Any other questions? The one thing I would say is just almost authorize yourself to try some things that might be messy, that might not work. And just say to the students, we're going to try some things to see if we can find more relevancy and more savior and um, be patient. This isn't going to crystallize in one day. Like literally, if I told you what the last couple of years has looked like in my class and how it's evolved, how Canvas has changed. If I showed you some of the stuff I did six months ago in Canvas, you'd be like, Brother Alan, that's not really, that's not very relevant. <laughs> and, and that didn't work. And I'm like, yeah, that's how we've got to this point is we're just trying things and seeing if it works. So be patient with yourself, but almost authorize yourself to go, I'm going to think a little differently. Michael, I hope that's okay. Maybe I shouldn't have said that, but. I think that's fantastic. And I think it's important to recognize that as a heart of a rescuer, it really is trying to come to know what your students are, are going through, what they're feeling. And that takes work too, because you're trying to get to know your students on a very uh, real level. For online institute, it's hard because we only have 15 weeks, 14 weeks with them. Whereas uh, in seminary, you have a lot more time with them. Um, and so as you're trying to develop your relationship with your students, just recognize that there is also one really key principle to remember. The Savior and Heavenly Father knows these students too. And so as you're, as you're preparing your lessons, um, be very prayerful. I have found, I actually, because I, I want to make sure I mention every single student by name in my prayers. And so I'll, I'll print out my, my, my list. And I'll pray for each one of them individually, and I'll read it sometimes until I know them perfectly. And I won't. <laughs> it takes too much time. But I have never had an experience more powerful than when I'm praying for a student and I have these impressions and feelings come. Of, I need to make sure I focus on this. Whereas I'm studying and thoughts and impressions will come about a student. The, the Savior knows his, his sheep. And as you're preparing, you'll, you'll recognize that you're, you're, you've, you're a member of a team with Heavenly Father and the Savior, and he's, he's going to help. I promise he's going to help. Love that, Michael. Can I add one thing that's worked for me? When I say those prayers and I think about individuals and I have faith, Heavenly Father sometimes is like, hey, Barbara needs something a little extra this week. And so literally this is super generic. This is a super cheap tripod. And I literally just take my phone, I put it there and I'm like, hey, Barbara, it's Brother Alan. 
I was praying about you, praying about the class this week, and I had just an impression. God loves you. I thought about you when I read this verse in Isaiah. He loves you. And I just send that 30-second clip through an inbox. Sometimes if I, in my seminary class, I'll send it through a parent's um, cell phone. And those little tiny things, when you pray about them, God, I just believe God inspires, if you ask. I, I just want to add my witness to what Michael says. He knows them. So even though we don't fully know him, we can strive to get to know him, but he does. And he's going to be like, send a little video, write in a little extra note. I have a question. Um, is there a fear at any point for seminary, online seminary? I, I taught online seminary last year. I'm teaching institute now. Um, but I'm curious about seminary, online seminary. Is there a fear? And I realize this is the message today is rescuing and missionary and so forth. That that becomes sort of the label for online seminary, that it is just for the rescue, the, the people are inactive or the missionary tool, that it's not for the, the uh, member in good standing, I guess that uh, it's just where the people who are having trouble uh, show up. Is, is that a fear to have tagged onto there at all? No. If, I, if, I showed you, if I showed you the message from parents right now across the board, fully active, not engaged, um, what's happening right now is real exciting, really exciting. And we're meeting the needs of every type of member with this program. I think, I think a bigger failure fear, to be honest with you, among some in SNI is that some of the release time programs might be threatened that we're gonna take some of their students because it's becoming so good. But I, I love Rick's comment, Rick Moon's our area director. He's like, you know what, if that starts happening, I'm just gonna tell the release time principals, you better up your game because there is no, there, there's, there's no better or worse. Like we want to meet the needs of our students. Doesn't matter what seminary they come to, early morning, release time online same thing with institute doesn't matter if they come in person online we we're going to introduce them to christ good question though michael do you have anything to add on that one yeah it, it's really really important to recognize that our goal in seminaries and institutes of religion is to gather every youth and young adult and so we provide a program that will meet those needs and some students are going to get credit and some students aren't but we're going to provide everything that they need to succeed, but especially invite them to, to do more. And if we can get them through the door, we'll put our arm around them and get them the rest. But sometimes we may need to go outside the door and bring them in with us. Um, and that, that's actually one thing I wanted to kind of close on too is um, one of the, the, the things that the Brother Allen has introduced has been the invitation to bring friends. And so just a couple logistical things to, to remember for, for those of you who are using um, Zoom Classroom with Zoom links. Um, obviously, it would be easier easy to have them come in and sit down on the couch. I've, I've had sit, uh, students do that. I had uh, students who were dating, bring their they, they would actually sit together. One was in the class, one wasn't. Um, well, I've had uh, siblings come. I've had family members come. Th that's definitely the easiest way. But as you're, you personally are going to find individuals that you know need to be in your class. And so you're, you're obviously more than welcome to, to send them your Zoom link. Um, but if you want to get them in your class, uh, reach out to me or Amy and we'll, we'll help them get you in, in your classes. Uh, for those of you who are teaching seminary specific, work with your coordinator and, and help them get those students into your classes. And if they're not a member of the church, whatever we can do, there's there really isn't anything prohibiting anybody from getting in our classes except for getting them the technology things that, that they need to be able to have the links. So let us help you help them in any way possible. But uh, one of the things we're going to do in about three weeks is we're going to we're going to actually advertise this through our social media channels of bring a friend to institute week where the whole whole concept is bring a friend and we'll, we'll have more for you that i think we're going to try it in seminary as well to just just make sure that we're we're reaching out and being a, in the mind of a rescuer 
um, the, uh, the the one thing that I think is is really relevant is, and I'm going to send this out as well in a, its own thing. But I wanted to show you a new change that happened today, which is fantastic that it happened in the middle of a semester. Oh, let's return to login page. Let me let me pull this up so that I can show you something that has changed in Wise. So please give me a second to pull that up. Okay, and we're still recording, so it gives me a chance to be able to show here. So this is wise 2churchofjesuschristorg um, Uh-oh, I lost my my page. There we go. And you, are you still able to see my my website? Yeah. Too? Okay. So uh, one of the things that's changed. Let me let me get to the online uh, institute program. All right. So whoops. There we go. So what we've got in in um, my class that it's a test class. So we're going to do this test class. Right here, you're going to notice uh, a new thing on there. It's, it's called messaging. When you click on this, this is how you can reach out to your students and send them a, a text or an email. Um, you'll, you can collect a, a specific class email or, or a, to, to a specific student. Um, you can choose, like, so for example, if I get this student, you can choose what student you're going to send a message to. So let's say we're going to send, this is my test class, so it's all my family. Uh, but let's say we're going to send Joseph a text message. You would just send your test test message. And this is actually uh, not his phone number, so I don't know where this will go, but we'll just send him a test. Um, well, it doesn't work so that, because it's not his. Let's do Caitlin's. So send a test text message and it, that's how you do it. Just a simple easy way to send a text. Um, you can choose to do an email as well. Uh, if that was the case, the, uh, she hasn't set up her email and so that would be something that we would need to do to get things worked. Um, but this is a new system, new setup for, for WISE. Uh, easy way. The problem is you want to ask your students to go to myinstitute.churchofjesuschrist.org or myseminary.churchofjesuschrist.org and update their contact information so that we get the correct stuff for them. So I'll send more information on this as well so you have a step-by-step -step to show you. But please know that that's something that's new and it's kind of, um, they spring it on, up on us without us knowing it was going to be happening. So I apologize about this switch and it. This came from from church headquarters. Any questions, concerns, comments, wonders, or worries? Could we get like a easy how to update your stuff so we could send it out to our students that says this is how you update it for seminary so that we can get all their contact information? Absolutely. I will, I'll create a little meme that you can send that would be a, an easy uh, picture that you can send out in a text or, or an inbox or even post it in a Canvas course so that they can Go step by step. That will be easiest, I think. Thanks. You're welcome.